Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series Six Months of Set Theory and Higher Order Logic. In this video, we're going to be looking at the axiom of extensionality. Now, before we get into the six axioms which will define a basic universe, we will add two axioms which will help more rigorously define what we mean by sets and classes and illustrate why V, the, the universal class, is not a set. The first of these two axioms is known as the axiom of extensionality. So to be clear, we're not starting on the axioms that define exactly what V is, what the universal class is, but rather we're talking about specific properties of classes and sets that are just going to define what those are formally and some of the important characteristics that both classes and sets have. Okay, so this axiom states that all sets or classes which contain the same members are the same. This tells us several things about a set. So if two different sets contain the same members, then there aren't really two different sets there. There's only one set. If two different classes each have all the same members, there aren't really two different classes there. It's just one class. So we get several conclusions from this axiom. First off, order doesn't matter in a set. The set of A, B is the same as the set B, A because they contain all the same members. So they're the same set. The same object cannot appear in a class multiple times and count as different sets. So the set of A and the set of A, A, or the set of A, 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 they are all the same set. They are all the same thing because they contain all the same members. The number of times a member appears does not matter. So listing it more than once is just redundant. All those sets or all those classes are identical. If two classes are subclasses of each other, then they, in fact, are the same class. So in other words, if A only contains elements of B, and B only contains elements of A, then they must have exactly the same elements. Hopefully that makes sense. Remember that all sets are subsets of themselves, and all classes are subclasses of themselves. So to show that something is identical to a class or a set is identical to another class or a set all you have to do is show that they're each subclasses of each other if that becomes a reciprocal relationship then those must be identical because if a has three members all three of those members are members of b and b has all of its members are members of a then b can't have more than those three members so if that subclass relationship goes both ways, the classes are just the exact same class. We can state this formally as follows. For all A and all B, for all X, X is a member of A if and only if X is a member of B implies that A is equal to B. So if our membership goes both ways, so if for any object, any individual, if that individual being a member of one of the classes is materially equivalent to that individual member being, being a member of the other class, then those two classes are identical. In other words, for all classes A and B and all sets X, if X being a member of A is materially equivalent to X being a member of B, then A and B are identical. For example, the set of all closed two-dimensional shapes with three sides has exactly the same members as the set of all closed two-dimensional shapes with three angles. So the set of triangles and the set of trilaterals are identical because they have exactly the same membership. We will refer to this as the extensionality axiom in proofs. Now you'll note if you're looking carefully that I use the capital letters to refer to classes and the lowercase letters to refer to sets. We're going to start doing that more and more as we dig deeper into this distinction between classes and sets. As we said, 
Originally, we were going to use the lowercase letters to refer to members. Well, sets are always members of the universal class. So we're going to stick those lowercase letters generally as being sets, not classes, or sets, not necessarily classes, and the uppercase letters as being the broader definitions of classes and possibly sets. If that didn't make sense, don't worry. We'll dig more into this difference of classes and sets very much in our next axiom video, which is the axiom of separation. Probably the most complicated video we're going to get into in this first month. Watch this video and more here at carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.